Now in this video, we'll talk about the differentiation by first principle. So this is the beginning okay, of um, all calculus. All right? So um, namely invented by Newton and another uh, mathematician. So uh, the more famous one, of course, is Newton. All right? In any case, uh, what is differentiation all about? Or what is calculus all about for that matter? So calculus or differentiation is a something to do with gradient so all of us know that if we have a line right let's say y equals to mx plus c which is we are so familiar with to find the gradient of the line is very simple or right, all we need to do is take two points and all we need to do is to find the rise over run right which is the difference in the y which is I'll call it the dy and uh, the difference in the x which is I'll call it the dx Okay, so the rise, which is the dy, over the dx, which is the run, and that gives us the gradient. Okay, and what we understand is that the gradient is a fixed value for a line. So at every point, the gradient is the same, because it doesn't matter at which point do you draw this right angle triangle, you get the same gradient. Okay, so the gradient is a measurement of steepness. All right. So when it comes with line, I mean, when we're talking about lines, it's very easy and straightforward to think about. Now, but when we talk about curve, so for example, if we have a curve like this, okay, now let's say this is a, a typical um, exponential curve. All right, now what is so fascinating about curve is that, uh, well, at this point, let's say the gradient at this point, if I want to find this gradient at this point, I will have to draw a tangent. So all of us know what's tangent, right? A tangent is a straight line that touches the curve at one point. So if I were to draw a tangent like this, Okay, this is the straight line. So the gradient at this point will be the gradient of this tangent, which will be this 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 red line or this level of steepness. Okay? Now on the other hand, let's say if I'm interested to find the gradient at this point instead of the red point or it's the green point, I will have to draw another tangent, okay, at the point oops, this is not very nice. Uh, alright, let's pretend that this is a tangent at a point. The, the green point okay and as you all of us can see this green line this green tangent is definitely more steep than the red tangent and therefore uh, all of us expect that we have a bigger value for the gradient because we have a bigger rise over the same run okay now what this tells us is that at every point on the curve all right at every point you will have a different tangent and therefore you have a different gradient Okay, and that means to say when we're dealing with a curve, the gradient is not fixed. Okay, the gradient of a curve is not a constant, unlike a straight line. Alright, so a straight line, we all of us understand the gradient is constant, but for a curve, it's not. So the question now is, how do we find the gradient of a curve? Now, you, know, you may think, well, this is the way, right? You just draw a tangent and you measure. But all of us all understand that if you draw a tangent, um, it may not be the most accurate way to find a ten, uh, the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so now how do we do that? So, so uh, what Newton, supposedly Newton, came out with this wonderful idea, which is uh, laid the foundation for all calculus to come. All right, and in the subsequent videos that you will see, it's all because of this first principle. All right, so uh, what did he do? Uh, what did he think about was something like this. Let's say, for example, you have a line. Okay, and this line we call it y equals to fx. All right, now let's call two points. Uh, one point called p, and the other point called q. All right, the p and q are both points on this curve. Now, this point p lies on the x coordinate. Okay, and therefore the y coordinate of p will be obviously fx. Okay, and let's say the point Q right, lies on the point with the x-coordinate. Now, let's call this, this gap here delta x, all right, which is actually the difference in x. And therefore, this, this x-coordinate will be obviously x plus delta x. And naturally, all of us should understand that this y-coordinate of the point Q will be f of x plus delta x. Not very difficult to understand, right? So the idea is, if we were to join join the point to the the point P to Q, we will form a chord. Okay, mm, not very straight line. I'm sorry. Let me try again. Okay, let's just leave it as it is. So this this chord PQ, 
All right, and uh, in order to find this cot, the, the gradient of this cot PQ, again, we will uh, employ the same formula that we know, which is called the difference in the Y over the difference in the X, okay, which is the rise over run. So the, this difference in the Y will be obviously the difference in the Y value, which is the higher Y value minus away the lower Y value. Okay, and this difference in the X is known as delta X. So the gradient, okay, the gradient of PQ, which is the cot PQ, right, will be equal to the rise, which is the, the vertical height, right, which is your F of X plus delta X minus away the F of X over the delta X. So this is the rise over the run, which is the vertical height over the horizontal height. Okay, now then you may say, uh, well, this gradient of PQ isn't quite the same as the gradient at point P. Uh, after all, PQ is a line and all of us understand it from here. So what Newton has in mind, had in mind, I'm sorry, it's a past tense, uh, was something like this. He thinks that, well, if we were to slide this point Q lower, okay, such that PQ, the cot PQ becomes shorter, all right, then we can have the same cot, and we have the same formula to find the gradient of this cot PQ, right, which we shall call it Q1, okay? And if we were to go on further, that means to say we move this point Q even closer to P, and we call this Q2, this green cot, okay, will also have the same formula as this formula, isn't it, the gradient of PQ, such that to the point, if if he were to make the point P and Q so close, so ever so close, then the gradient of this PQ, which is so close and almost like a dot, is going to be almost the same as the gradient at this particular point P. Okay, so that's the logic, which is the beauty in it. And, and, and it simply says that, well, if the two points become so close that they become almost like a point, right, the limit of that gradient will be the gradient at this particular point. All right, and therefore, that gives us the formula for what we are going to do, and that is uh, the, the dy dx formula, all right, which, is, which stands for the difference in the y over the difference in x, which is also known as the gradient function all right, of any function, any curve, so gradient function. So this is like a machine that helps us find the gradient at any point. So it says that, well, this dy dx formula is actually the limit of delta x tend towards zero of this particular formula that we have written up here. Now let's think about it for one, se one more second. All right, as per what we discussed earlier on, it does make a bit of sense that if we were to slide this Q, this point Q so close to the point P, such that the cord, the gradient of the cord would then almost become the gradient at this particular point. And this gradient at this particular point is the gradient at point X, where X is X, the X coordinate is X. So therefore, that gives rise to this formula, which is the dy dx, which is the gradient function, can be given by this particular formula when my delta X is zero. Okay, when my delta x tends to zero, I'm so sorry here. This should be a delta x and not an fx. Okay, based on, as you can see, it's the same formula as uh, what we've written here. So it's delta x. Okay, so uh, in the next video, we'll I will show you one or two examples uh, that we have to use this uh, to prove our differentiation.